Hey everyone, my name is Chris. Welcome to my channel. Uh, tonight is uh, a couple of days after I had rebuilt my scope. I had done a full tear down and rebuilt of my whole rig. And I spent a good chunk of this afternoon recalibrating and recalibrating everything. So for tonight, even though it is quite cloudy, I'm hoping it clears up a little bit, I'm going to try to take a picture of a globular cluster. Also, I've decided to name my rig. Um, I've already called my uh, pier, or my observatory, I'm calling it the Shaky Pier. And as far as my rig goes, I think since it's a Celestron on a wedge, I'm going to call it Wedgie. Because you lack imagination, now get some lighting and a real camera. So I know what you guys are thinking, Chris, why are you wearing socks with sandals? Well, because it's cold outside and it's convenient. Also, Chris, why are you still fiddling with your telescope instead of being inside warm? Uh, I managed to knock my guide scope out of alignment as I was carrying the scope up the stairs. So I had to redo uh, that alignment and recalibrate things once again. I'm going to be using my wide angle lens today too uh, on my DSLR. See if I can get some wide shots of the sky as well. Although it is supposed to be cloudy throughout the night, so uh, maybe what I'll get is a nice time lapse. I'm just finishing up my alignment. Uh, I'm gonna grab one more star. To make sure that my pointing model is accurate. I'm not being super exact here uh, because what I need this to do is just get me into the vicinity of what I want to shoot. I've already done my uh, ASPA and my drift alignment, so I'm pretty confident that uh, my telescope is pointed in the right direction and polar aligned. Uh, so this is just the final piece here. I'll, I've already focused my DSLR. Uh, to piggyback on my mount and I will do one final uh, auto alignment using the alignment aid in APT to get my scope aligned as well. First one I'm going to be trying for is M5 which is right at the equator uh, which should be challenging for auto guiding uh, since uh, objects at the equator are going to be moving pretty quickly if my alignment is off, I'm going to be, see, be able to see it right away. I can see M5 right here. My cooling aid is telling me that my camera is cooled. Uh, which... <laughs> it's minus 4 degrees right now. Uh, Celsius, so a little chilly tonight. Alright, here's the globular cluster. I'm going to bring it into the center. I'm going to do a quick autofocus and ready to go. I don't know why, but the bloody mount keeps slewing to the left. It is not wanting to settle. This could be a problem. It's almost 1 a.m. I was hoping to be halfway done with this first globular cluster by now. Meanwhile, I can't get the focusing aid to work because um, my cluster keeps shifting out of view. Come on, Wedgie. It's way too late and way too cold for you to be acting up. Okay, so after struggling with the mount for God knows how long, I finally enabled auto guiding so that I could get the autofocus to work. 
Uh, it should be done shortly. I'm just double checking my uh, focus calibration. And uh, again, I'll be ready to go. 28426. Okay, well, that's in the ballpark. Last time it was 28423. Okay. Okay, okay. Let's take it. I'll do a few photos and see what happens. And my tracking has just been terrible. Well, okay, it seems to have settled now, 1.67, but it was all over the place. I have Backyard Nikon running a set of 100 frames at 180 seconds each at 800 ISO, and this is running off a Nikon D5200 with a 200 millimeter lens. Oh, I'm trying to get the backyard Nikon up and running. I managed to sit around here for the first frame to complete. It is hard to tell from this picture, but at least the globular cluster is centered. So I've got M5 uh, running here, but my guiding graph is all over the place right now. And I don't know why. Uh, hopefully it settles. I th Gremlins in the mount is what it is. I probably should not have called a damn telescope wedgie. fighting the gremlins in the mount for a couple of uh, hours I only had a little bit of time left of darkness for the rest of the night uh, and with clouds rolling in I ended up with only 25 usable frames uh, I had weeded out the ones that had any obvious defects due to uh, the mount shaking shaky pier or uh, clouds rolling in I'm running these through Deep Sky Stacker to stack them. And uh, I'm being fairly aggressive with my registration. Uh, since this is a globular cluster, there are a lot of stars. Uh, had I been a little bit less aggressive, there would have been more stars and the process of stacking the image would have taken longer. Now typically I look at score and uh, the number of stars in order to pare down this list uh, to weed out the frames that, uh, that are less uh, sharp that have other defects in them as well. And here I've, I've sped up the process and this is DSS's uh, stacked version of that M5 cluster. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my DSLR frames. So these are the wider frames taken with my D5200 Nikon using a 200 millimeter, uh, 52 millimeter uh, lens. Now for these pictures, I'm not using any flats or darks, although I probably should be. I'm getting some amp noise coming in off the DSLR as the weather is getting warmer. Now, I ended up processing two sets of uh, frames for, uh, from my ASI. The one on the left, uh, I processed 
being less selective about which frames I allowed through. And the one on the right, uh, I had pared down to about 22 usable frames. 22, 23. And I can see the difference, right? The one on the left where I was a little bit less selective, um, I let through a lot of frames where I had some some back and forth lateral movement on the mount and I can see some stretching of the stars. The one on the right, the stars are still stretched a little bit and uh, now that I'm, I'm thinking about this, I think that maybe my polar alignment wasn't as good as I thought it was, uh, which may have accounted for some of the issues I had with the mount last night as well. It's amazing how you can uh, impact a whole night session by not having good alignment. I probably should have set, taken a second pass uh, at doing my uh, drift alignment uh, after doing the, uh, the altitude, having gone back and, and done the easy axis again. But uh, here you can see uh, the image on the right. The, the stars are stretched by about one pixel uh, compared to what they should be. Meanwhile, on the left, it's two pixels out. I am so far very impressed with the color depth uh, and the uh, just the, the depth of the image produced by the ASI 294MC Pro compared to my Nikon. I'm going into Cyril to do some, some initial processing. I recently watched a video by Nico Carver from Nebula Photos. Uh, I had not used Cyril before. Uh, he did a intro into Cyril and how to process a nebula with it. It's a fantastic video and uh, I am dismayed that I had not come across Cyril before. It's It's been absolutely fantastic and I've been reprocessing some of my older images. But basically following Nico's process, uh, you initially set a symmetry point with a darker part of your your image and you do a bit of a curve to bring out a little bit of the detail not too much and then um, if you have a nebula if you have a image with a lot of uh, gradient in it you take different symmetry points and you stretch them so you're basically stretching different frequencies of light uh, across your your image so this was the uh, darker that I was attempting to do. Now, uh, I did make a big mistake here. I did not set my symmetry point. I just drew a box around where I wanted it to be. So I'm going to have to start that process over. So again, uh, going into image processing, I'm doing a curve, uh, drawing a box around uh, some of the darker space, and now setting the symmetry point and now that allows me to focus the, the stretching around that symmetry point. So doing a, a bit of subtle stretching here. Uh, as per Nico, don't overdo it on your stretching. This is just to bring out the initial details. Uh, for me, what I found is uh, I stretch just enough to be able to extract the background and to extract stars depending on what I'm processing. Now in this image, I don't need to extract stars because it's the stars that we're trying to capture. But I have redone some of my uh, nebula captures and my uh, galaxy captures so far. And this tool has made a huge difference in the final output. So here I've grabbed another symmetry point, now closer to the center of uh, uh, the globular cluster. And I'm doing a bit of a stretch here too, so that this stretch has less of an impact on the darker areas which I've already stretched and now stretches the, the uh, higher point. The background extraction has been a monumental time saver. Trying to extract the background uh, in GIMP doesn't work as well. So.
excuse me. Uh, here I'm playing with my smoothing parameters, so how much of the image do I want to smooth in the background? And I'm, I'm still working out the types of images and where the sampling per line works best. Um, I'm not using any kind of light pollution filter on my main scope. And you can see the ring of, of light uh, around the outer edge of the picture. So redoing the background extraction with different level of smoothing. Balance that out a little bit. That looks a little bit better. Now in the image processing that I've done of the images that I previously taken, uh, what I found is it's helpful to take a couple of different versions or process a couple of different versions in Cyril at different levels of stretching and intensity. And then uh, I would bring those in as, as layers in GIMP and combine them to produce an image that has uh, slightly more detail around the contrast. Here I'm just going to use the, uh, the one image for processing. Here I'm in GIMP, I've brought the image in. I mentioned in a previous video I use GIMP for my processing because, in part because it's free, but mostly because it does a really good job uh, for, for an open source project. I believe it is open source like this. Uh, it does a, a really great job, at least at the level that I'm at. Uh, I'm sure if you're uh, more professional, perhaps uh, something like PixInsight and uh, Adobe uh, would give you a lot more features. You can get a lot more out of your images, but uh, I'm not entering any competitions. I'm just doing these for myself. So I've done a copy of my original, so I have something to go back to, and now I'm doing some stretches and some color adjustments. Because I'm shooting in, in a very light polluted area, I'm in a, a suburb uh, around uh, Toronto in Canada, and my, my skies are borderlate and getting worse. So I get this reddish glow across my images that uh, I've heard is probably from that light pollution. So playing around with the lighting hues and the saturation uh, is, is a lot of the post-processing that I end up doing. So uh, a couple of iterations later, here's what th that image looks like. I, I took an image last year in June so this is about a year ago, side-by-side -side comparison. The one on the right is with my DSLR at 15 seconds over, I'm going to say, between a half hour and 45 minutes worth of data. Uh, that's the one on the right, rather. The one on the left is, is the one from uh, this session. And uh, although the, the stars in the image on the right, they do seem tighter. And that was a shorter exposure before I had auto-guiding, but the, the color depth and just the the amount of signal in the image on the light uh, on the on the left was uh, was much higher. I'm going to show my final images at the end of this video. Thanks for watching.
Wow. Wow.